Hi guys and welcome to uh, my review uh, of the MIM Dark Magician. Um, before I start, I want to first of all uh, thank Names. Uh, uh, his real name is Ricardo, actually, but thank Names for having been so kind to to lend me his uh, uh, MIM Dark Magician. Uh, living in in Portugal, unfortunately, our our community in terms of uh, earphone lovers, or let's put it, you know, is not uh, very large. And so it's uh, a little bit difficult to come by certain things. And either you buy them like I do, I buy everything, or then basically you're not going to be able to, to have access to, to, to certain things because just nobody has them. Uh, and in that aspect, uh, I, I thank Nims because uh, he does have a few nice sets. He has this, he's got an RSV, he's got a couple of EJs, and um, uh, it, it was good to, to have met him, uh, very knowledgeable individual, uh, it was very nice to have met him because it has given me access to one or two things which I don't have in my collection, uh, and uh, enabled me to then, you know, give you give you guys my opinion and what I think about those specific IEMs. Anyway, on to the, the Dr. Ma Dark Magician. Um, I don't have the full package of it. It does have this nice metal case it brings with it, which is kind of you know reminiscent of uh, some of uh, let's sure stuff like the EJ 7 m It brings a similar case and so on and so forth. Um, the IEM itself is here. It brings this very nice cable. I mean, the cable is really nice. A little bit uh, on the um, memory. You know, it's got its own kind of life, let's put it that way. But it's, it's, not, it's a nice cable, 4.4 termination. The IMs themselves are nice. I mean, let me just... Small. Um, they, they fit perfectly in, in my case. They fit perfectly. It's a metal shell, as you can see. Um, I mean, really nothing to, to, to falter. Uh, they're not, you know, they're not, uh, if, well, if you're looking for something beautiful and, and so no, no, they're very plain Jane kind of, uh, of, of an approach, but it's, 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 it's works, it's fine. Uh, and then that's what matters. You know, that's what we want in terms of tips. I'm using my 07 tips, um, uh, because these were the only ones that actually were able to, 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 you know, get me the best response. And um, I'm glad I actually put these tips on as opposed to the spin fits, which I originally was using because I just wasn't getting from, from the spin fits the, the magic that the Dark Magician has. Anyway, I just wanted to show you a quick detail here, which is uh, in terms of the positioning of the, of the, of the vent holes in, in terms of the Dark Magician, if you can see carefully there, I'm going to try and focus this a little bit better. There we go. It's actually on the nozzle. And the other one is over there. Okay. Excuse my ugly finger. There you go. And being on the nozzle, it um, it does to a certain extent help uh, help understand and help justify why the dark magician has the sound that it has. Uh, and uh, it's got a re reasonable, I mean, relatively larger bore size than usual. And again, that explains the openness of the sound and, and the way that it's been tuned. Um, I also wanted to say that, um, before I get into more details, well, there's so much I want to say that I just hope I don't forget everything. Um, the, the Dark Magician has, uh, as of late, uh, gathered a lot of momentum um, in, in terms of the community and, and, and the hype that it's created. And yes, I want to say that that hype is justified uh, because it is, in fact, a f fantastically sounding IEM. It is. Um, and, you know, I think maybe, maybe, I could be wrong, but I think maybe that the... the the reason for being for the Dark Magician uh, is a, an IM which uh, has been around for a while and has been the center of, uh, or, well, has kind of, I'm not going to say it's the, 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 the one to beat, but it it's, um, has established itself in the same way as the Blonde 03 when it came out three, four years ago almost now, established itself as a budget uh, IEM that sounded really completely different from the rest. And, and, and you know, the, the truth was, it was good. It, it is good. It sounds good, period. I mean, uh, you know, love it or hate it, 
just uh, you know you, 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 we can't all like the same thing but the truth is the Blano 3 is amazing and in terms of the higher or the more expensive IEMs the one that has been for a long time uh, the, the, the the king let's put it that way is this 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 baby uh, the the tantrum oxygen um, and, and it, it, yes it is it is a, a fantastic IEM period the the tantrum the tantrum oxygen is in terms of a single DD up to three hundred dollars and even more expensive because it, it it has it has the capability of beating the likes of for example the moon drop illumination which is way more expensive it has the capability of beating stuff like the uh, Isabelai, uh, you know, the RX-10 from Symphonio, um, the Isabelai is from Oriolus. Uh, this has been, I think, maybe the inspiration for the MIM, because when you actually look at the curve of one and the other, there is a lot of similarities, okay? And I'll show you the curves now in a second, and you'll start to understand better what I'm what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to put forward. And I think that perhaps uh, what happened was the, 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 the tuner, uh, the creator of the MIM, had the, the, the oxygen has his perhaps reference, and he tried to address some of the things that he perhaps did not like on the oxygen. Uh, the first thing that he doesn't like and a lot of people don't like about the oxygen is the fact that the fit on this thing is appalling, it is. Um, in my case, it's okay. It's not great. I have to find the right tip and I have to play around, but it's okay. But the, you know, having a short nozzle doesn't help. And then the other thing that some people maybe found not 100% to their taste, and this I think is also very much dependent on what your music library is, is the fact that it is that the auction can sometimes be a little bit. A little bit over energetic in the upper mids, uh, lower treble, and and bring thus to the female voices this extra energy that some might not exactly like, and the MIM in that aspect has um, addressed those two issues and 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 made things um, differently. That's been tuned differently to address those issues. Let me actually just show you here quickly the graphs and. And when I show you the graph, you you'll see what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say. Anyway, this is the graph of the uh, of the uh, dark magician, and as you can see, it's it's. I'm going to call this a, a neutral tuning, really, because um, everything just stays smooth all the way through. There is really nothing that jumps out. There's really nothing that is over accentuated over another over another part of the spectrum. And it just makes for a very, um, very coherent sound. Um, to the point that when you actually look at the graph, yes, you can grasp straight away that it's neutral and that it's going to be smooth and, and you know, but you don't really get the reality of, of what it sounds like, which is the truth. I mean, graphs don't give you that. They can give you a perception of what we might be able to get from a, from a you know, from the get-go, but they won't tell you if, if transient, transient speed is good. They won't tell you if if it's uh, you know if, if it's got impactful clean textured base uh, it won't tell you it won't tell you a number of things um, let me try and break this down a little bit here on, on on what we see in terms of the base it is just a little bit warm it's almost flat and that transition and that flatness conveys um, a marriage between the base and and um, the mids, which is perfect. The, the, there's no bleeding, there's no nothing. You just have this absolutely smooth, textured, detailed bass, slight sub bass roll from about 50 hertz down. Um, and, it, and it's just absolutely amazing. Um, and when you hear it, you would not say that there is anything lacking in terms of mid bass impact or anything. Yes you do notice in certain songs that there could be a little bit more sub bass a little bit more added warmth but overall when you listen to this it doesn't exactly uh, you know mirror what the graph says it is the mid bass impact is amazing uh, and it, the the dm the dark magician is one of those sets that the more power you give it it the better it sounds so it scales 
amazingly well. Okay, it, if it sounds good at low volume, it sounds better at mid volume, it sounds out of this world at high volume. That's it. That's that's the truth. The mids, as I was saying, are silky smooth. There's no area here which is going to make uh, you know voices be aggressive or, or, or out of context. It, it is perfect. The mids. I have two references in terms of mids for me, which are the AudioSense DT200 and the Aul Audio Neon. Uh, those two are my references when it comes to mids. Um, obviously the Neon, uh, more complete I am in, in terms of the rest of the spectrum than the DT200. The DT200 does have good bass, does have good treble, but it's it's lacking in quantity. It's, it's just enough for a nice, clean, let's say, audiophile listen. Uh, the Aul Audio, no. The Aul Audio has plenty bass, more than enough treble, uh, and and it scales like a beast as well. And it plays better the more the more power you give it as well. And and it just maintains itself so composed all the way through. And the DM does exactly the same thing. So the DM has now become, let's say, a third reference for me in terms of what good mids should sound like. Okay. Um, what else can I say by looking at the graph? Uh, the highs, again, spot on, perfect. There's more than enough energy. Uh, you know, it's, they, they, they are... F there's really nothing that you can falter in terms of how everything is presented and how everything just marries. There's, everything is in the right quantity, in the right place. Um, there's no sibilance, there's no nothing. Um, if anything, and when I start doing some comparisons, you will understand where perhaps the DM, at least for me, uh, is ultimately not uh, my perfect single DDIM. Uh, although, I mean, I, I have to admit, it is absolutely amazing. It is. When I initially listened to it uh, yesterday, when I got it with uh, some spin fits, it was okay, but I wasn't impressed. There was something that just was wrong. And then I started tip rolling, and once I put on the the zero seven tips, wow! I mean, it really made a huge difference. And this is one thing that I will say about the DM tips, very important. Source in terms of what are you hooking it up to give power, very important. Uh, I used. I can show you that I used uh, Megatron, I used uh, Hip Deck, I used the NX7, okay, and I used the NX7 in a very unorthodox combination. It's hooked up to an Abigail, so the Abigail is what is my deck for the NX7. I know some of you might think I'm crazy, but hey, it works very well. Uh, I usually have it hooked up to my Q5. Uh, my Tudelix 5K, sorry, and um, and with the Abigail, it, it it's it sounds even better than the 5K. Uh, that's the tr that's the truth. It sounds even better than the 5K. Anyway, uh, back to the graph, and let me just now add the uh, oxygen so that we can start seeing where the differences lie. And straight away, when you look, you basically see that they follow each other extremely well from 1 to 8k roughly the only difference is it's been brought down in the MIM so the DM the level is just been brought down that those 3 4 dBs and those 4 dBs that it brings it down then does away with that extra energy that some people might not uh, like uh, as much in the oxygen and it just brings it down enough for it to not be as fatiguing so you can listen to this for hours okay and then in terms of, of um, the, the, the bass response, the oxygen has, well, when you compare it like this, you'd say, oh, the oxygen is a bass monster. Why? No, no, it's not a bass monster. It's got just enough bass. And for myself and my, my, my particular library, it's got that extra amount of bass quantity to make it perfect. And that's why I prefer the oxygen over the MIM. Okay, this is the main reason why I prefer the oxygen over the, the MIM. That extra energy that it's got up top does not bother me. 
Why? Because it's matched nicely with the extra bass that it has. So in no way, if if maybe this was as low as the MIM, if the, if the if the mids were the same level as the day as the as the Dark Magician, then maybe this would sound cloudy. This would sound dark. No, that's not the case. That extra energy that it has there is basically the extra energy that you have here in terms of the bass. So they complement each other nicely. And yes, the oxygen here is a harmonish tuned uh, um, IEM. But for me, it, it sounds amazing. And I, and I want to thank Michael Bruce from Short Bus to, for, for his rec on it because I was undecided whether to buy it or not in, in the early stages of, of, of being in this hobby. And uh, it, it was based on his rec that I bought the oxygen and I don't regret it. I've, I've got two pairs. I actually lent one out to, to NIMS uh, so that he could compare it to the Olina. And once I get my Olina, I will also be doing that comparison. Uh, and this goes back to what I was saying earlier on about the oxygen. The oxygen has of late become a reference in terms of what things are, are being compared to. And the MIM is a reference in a price range higher and the Olina uh, is definitely a reference in a, in a price range uh, lower than the oxygen. Uh, they share a lot of similarities, uh, a lot of things are common. Uh, the biggest difference is the shell and basically we, we could say that the Olina is a cheap oxygen and I'll just leave it at that for now. Once I do my review and I've listened to it thoroughly, I'll obviously give a, a more thorough uh, opinion, but in short, that's what it is, okay? Um, anyway, back to the graph here and as, as I was saying, as you can see, they, they, are, they are very similar. I did found the oxygen's treble to be just a little bit more to uh, a little bit more f uh, 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 I don't know what the right word here is to choose. I'm not going to say bright. I'm not going to say aggressive. There's just a little bit more of it. Period. At least to my ears I perceive just a little bit more of treble. A little bit more air, a little bit more up top there. Um which helps out with the sparklies and so on. Um, but, I mean, both of them are amazing. Uh, the treble is not, is not where my final decision was made. Uh, like I just said, my final decision was made over the, um, over the base. That's it, okay? Moving on. And, and let me actually... Yeah, actually, let me just put on yeah, something so that you guys can see. Um, let me take out the oxygen and I'm going to put on this graph which belongs to an IEM the, the more savvy ones or the ones that are more into the hobby will maybe recognize it the ones that are not don't know what it is they can see a harmonish type of a curve that looks pretty decent and so on and so forth some parts are similar to the, to the Dark Magician and this curve belongs to the Moondrop Kato and those of you that have seen my review on the Kato know that I consider it as well a reference in terms of a go-to IEM under the or around the $200 mark. Um, the other two for me are the, the Tenstrom HANA 2021 and the, the BK, BQEYZ uh, Autumn. The difference between the three in a very, uh, very um, concise way is the HANA has a fuller base, a, a warmer base. The BQEYZ uh, has a, a, a mid-range which is a little bit more up front, a little bit more forward. Um, the Moondrop is, is basically, the Kato is basically uh, an improvement over the, the KEXXS. Or, if you want, or if you will, uh, an area that has grown up. Okay, And when I compared the Kato to the, the MIM, I have to admit that I was actually quite surprised. Why? Because although you see that it has that extra base like uh, we have in the Oxygen uh, compared to the, 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 the Dark Magician, for some reason that extra base is not perceived as such. So we get a lot of that openness in the sound that uh, we find as well uh, in the the dark magician. I mean, 
you know, the, 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 the thing that gets to you, or at least to me, when you hear the Dark Magician the first time is how open, how amazing the mids are, and how open the sound is. It's, it's just so open, so wow, you know, like the 3D of this, of this IM is tremendous. And this, this, it's, it's just so, everything is just so detailed, so textured. Um, you know, very, the imaging is tremendous. Uh, the, the way it plays instruments, um, it, it, it's, it's honestly, it, it is, it, it just gets you. When you hear it, it just gets you straight away. And you know that you are hearing something truly special. When you hear the oxygen, on the other hand, you get all of that, in my opinion, um, but warmer. And that way is then the decision how or what do you prefer? Do you prefer a warmer sounding I am or do you prefer something which is going to be the ultimate in terms of detail? Um, the ultimate in terms of getting the, you know, the little finer nuances and so on and so forth. Uh, layering, uh, everything. What is your preference? W you know? Um, personally, myself, I, I prefer the oxygen because that extra warmness just, for me, conveys a more realistic sound. Uh, quite a few times it just makes certain uh, male voices sound more true it's saying it makes some female voices sound more true uh, so I, I don't mind losing the ultimate little detail that the, the dark magician can pick up uh, but gaining that extra warmth that extra coziness like I sometimes call it which just makes things more more engaging you know uh, yes it is true the, 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 the oxygen can sometimes have that extra brightness, but like I said, somehow it just marries nicely with the rest of the spectrum reproduction. And the Kato is kind of an in-between of the two. The Kato is an in-between of the oxygen and the Dark Magician, in the sense that it has that extra little bit of bass that might be uh, what is lacking for some people that have listened to Dark Magician and... and and have actually covered up the, the, the vent hole to get that extra bass. And uh, I recall Paul Wasabi uh, was the first person to actually do that and graph it. And you can definitely see there's a, an increase in the bass output. Um, so this this graphing or this, this little covering up of the vent hole does improve the bass without that meaning that the rest of the spectrum is in any way uh, changed by, by, by it. And as I was saying, and let me just put here the, the graph of, of the Kato again. Uh, the Kato, when, when you listen to it, or when I listen to it, I found that it had a lot of the things that the MIM has. Very open, very detailed, not as detailed. Fair enough, let's, let's be honest. Um, but very open, very detailed, um, big sound. Um, with that little extra bass that is lacking, maybe for some, in the in the Dark Magician. And I was quite surprised. I was not expecting it, to be honest. Yes, in terms of technicalities, the Kato is not as good uh, as either the Oxygen or the, the, the MIM. I mean, let me just quickly put here the graph of the, of the Oxygen as well, so that we have the three here just for the sake of comparison. And as you can see, I mean, the, the Kato and, 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 and the, the Oxygen, let me remove here the MIM. The Kato and the Oxygen, you know what, let me actually put the Kato in a different color so it actually stands out a little bit more. Let me put, where is it? Here we go. Let me make this blue so that it really stands out. Okay, so, as you can see, the... the, the 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 cattle and the oxygen they say they share basically the same kind of base output and everything up to around 3k is very similar then there's some differences there between the two there's a, a drop off of, of the of the moon drop and and that it you see it's that it's exactly that 5k peak there that some people complain about in the oxygen okay for me it doesn't bother me so you don't get that in the cattle okay uh, and you don't get the same kind of treble extension, although when you listen to it, you don't really notice it. That's the reality. So they're very, very similar. Um, but in terms of technicalities, no, the technicality side of it, 
the oxygen is superior. Uh, ultimately, the timbre and the tonality of the oxygen is also more realistic. Um, and I mean, let's be honest, that, that, that's kind of to be expected when we are talking about things of such big price differences, okay? As for the 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 mids of the um, Kato and, and, and the Dark Magician, as you can see, they're very, very similar. There's a lot of similarities here. That uh, drop of the moon drop in terms of the 4, 5, 6K is what makes it as well then become less fatiguing or... Or less in less forward with regards to 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 some female vo voices. Although it does have a little bit more energy in the upper treble, so that, sorry, the upper mids than the MIM, but nothing that uh, you know is in any way uh, too much or aggressive or anything. But like I was saying, this was one of those pleasant surprises that I was really not expecting. Let me just show the the the. Uh, bring it down so i wasn't really expecting for the 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 the, the kato to have been so interesting in terms of how it sounds and basically you know what i'm gonna be saying next now might might be might some might consider uh, offensive i don't know i don't know if offensive is uh, the, the the right word but some might consider um, uh, not exactly the, the, the truth or whatever, but it, it's my opinion. Um, do do I consider the oxygen still as a reference in terms of a single DD? Definitely, yes, undeniably. The oxygen for me still is the reference. Uh, does the Kato uh, manage to be a very good uh, single DD IM? For someone that doesn't have or cannot afford the price of the oxygen, definitely yes, undeniably. Is the Dark Magician a superior IEM to these two? It is superior in certain instances and it is superior depending on what is ultimately your sound preference, what is ultimately your library. Okay. Uh, if details and, and that openness of sound and 3D and technicalities is your thing, then the Dark Magician is definitely the one, period. Um, what I'm about to say now is, is perhaps very controversial. Does it justify its price? No. In my opinion, it doesn't justify its price. I think that this IM could have been priced at around the same price as an Oxygen, $300, $350 easily, and priced at that amount, it would have been a absolute killer in terms of sales costing six hundred dollars roughly it enters a price range of of iems which uh, of equally if not better um and you know ej07m for example i've got an ej07m yeah for me it's as good it gives me everything that the Dark Magician gives, and it adds a few things to it. For example, let me just show you. Here's the EJ. Let me take away the Kato. Okay, the EJ. There we go. Okay, there we go. So, the EJ has basically the same mids as as the DM in my for me for my listening it um, please you know let's let's keep that in mind for my listening it has basically the same mids as the DM the same quality no harshness smoothness everything um, and it's got that sub bass that just renders music that I listen to that little bit more cozy okay it's got more than enough treble up top with the ESTs. I mean, it, it is honestly a tremendous IM for me personally. I love the EJ07M and I think the price is, is fair. It's just for it. Another IM which costs around the same thing and, and it, well, it's still not very well known. It's, it's, still, it's, it's still in the early stages of, of becoming known is this one here. Okay, let me just show that one, take away. Okay, it's that that curve that you see there. 
And that curve that you see there belongs to the Aur Audio Neon. Mids, copy paste of the DM basically, or the DM is copy paste of the Neon, whatever you want to say. Perfect, perfect mids, highs, perfect. Um, and then it's got that extra in the mid bass and in the sub bass, which again, for me and for my personal taste and for what I listen to, just renders things, you know, perfect. It just makes the sound reproduction of what I listen to, and I'll be posting the, the link to the music that I use, that I listen. Perfect. I'm not saying in any way that the DM doesn't reproduce that music well. It does. It does. But, but when you listen to stuff like Pete Belasco, uh, Deeper, and a few other songs that he has, uh, you see that there's something just lacking there in the ultimate low, low, low end, you know, um, Gregory Porter sounds amazing on the DM, it does, but there are certain instances there that there's just that little extra warmth missing that the oxygen gives it to me, uh, the Kato gives it to me, uh, the EJ gives it to me, definitely, and the Awul Audio also gives it to me, so this also does it. And we're talking about IEMs, which are all roughly the same price. And they are multi, multi-unit uh, IEMs, you know, they've got multiple drivers inside. Uh, not detracting from how difficult it is to tune a single DD, because it is difficult. I've, 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 I delve into it sometimes, and I've been able to do some, some interesting things. You know, to tune a multi-BA uh, IEM is, is very hard. Um, and the, the the tuning of both the 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 EJ zero seven and and of the the Aur audio the neon it's been done flawlessly. They are, they have been done excellent. There's there's so I can I can understand their price. I can understand that they cost six hundred six hundred and fifty dollars. I can I can accept understand and accept that. This I think is just overpriced. Period. The same way as I think that some other, other single DDs are overpriced. I think the price of an illumination is absolutely ridiculous. There's nothing to justify it. I think that the price of uh, Aureolus is Abilai as well. It's, it's crazy money. Uh, VR1 from Symphonio or the, the RX10 as well. N nothing justifies those excessively high prices, in my opinion. Especially when, and this now uh, goes in favor to the DM. If I have to actually compare the DM, and I haven't, but from what I I have I have um, been able to to ascertain, if I take the DM comp and, and and make a comparison to the Oriolos and 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 to and to uh, the Sinfonio and so on and so forth, uh, from what I've read, apparently this thing comes out on top. So that that's good. That means it's really been well tuned, and it and it, it is because if you actually look at the graphs, again graphs don't say everything, but if you actually look at the graphs of the of the Oriolos and of the Sinfonio, they're not, uh, they're not, they're not perfect. Let's put it that way. So there's definitely been a lot of attention paid to, to, um, to how this has been tuned and how this has been done. Uh, and and in that aspect, like I said, uh, you know, I don't want to continue because this is now being a really really long review. DM, Dark Magician, amazing, amazing, amazing. I am. It all depends if you can stretch yourself far as that far. You know, six hundred dollars is a lot of money, um, and and you know it's it's gonna have a very particular group of people that like the sound that it has. It's not as versatile as, uh, in my opinion, it's not as versatile. I mean, if you're gonna be playing EDM and stuff like that on this, you're not gonna be getting the best of what it can do. You know, if you're going to be listening to vocals, female vocals, if you're going to be listening to instrumentals, uh, yes, definitely the jazz. De yes, definitely this is amazing, 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 amazing. But in terms of versatility, versatility, the oxygen I think is more versatile. The Kato I think is going to be more versatile, ultimately at the end of the day. Anyway, guys, this is this is my take. This is my opinion. I hope I haven't offended anybody in, in, by what I'm saying. Um, and yeah, that's it. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.